says he's committed to significant resources. He's another billionaire. Significant resources uh, to uncover what, if anything, is happening on the property. And he says he intends to release all of his information as soon as it's gathered. Now, again, who is Brandon Fugel? Uh, he's a collector of movie memorabilia. Uh, he owns the bullet-ridden jacket worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the terminal. He owns Jor-El's cloak worn by Marlon Brando in the 1978 Superman film. Uh, he's invested in long-shot, almost science-fictional technology in the past decade. His investments include a <clears throat> gravitational physics project meant to produce clean energy. Didn't work out. But uh, two consultants in Frugal's investments brought him into contact with Bigelow, and that's why he decided to buy the Skinwalker Ranch. Now, those consultants, two guys named Hal Pudentoff and Dr. Christopher Green, they have a long history in exploring anomalous subjects, and both of them have conducted research on behalf of the CIA, again, according to Vice, Vice Online. And they were both involved in Bigelow's research on behalf of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Now, Puntoff is also known for promoting pseudoscience, including uh, psychic warrior Yuri Geller and Scientology e-meters. Now, what does all this mean? What could it mean? Okay, it could mean that these guys, Puntoff and Green, saw that their boss, Robert Bigelow, was losing interest, and they didn't want to lose their paycheck. So, they just got in charge, a hold of this Brandon Fugel, another billionaire, got him interested and had him buy the ranch so they could keep their paychecks. Could that be the case? Yeah, maybe. And if you want to talk about guys who are uh, who are excited about doing things like that, I mean, uh, Fugel's kind of a nut job, okay? But again, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. So it, it, it's hard to say exactly what this is all about exactly what we're doing, exactly what they're doing, I guess. Uh, the fact is, here are billionaires putting their money into something like this. Now, it could be that they're just doing it for fun, okay? Uh, billionaires kind of do that kind of stuff. When they've made billions of dollars, when you've made more money than it's physically possible to spend in your lifetime, you can do something out of the ordinary, okay? You and I can't do that, but they can. We can't imagine a billion dollars. Some people say so-and-so spent $10 million on a project, okay? And if you're a billionaire, that's like you or I spending $2,000. No, it's not like spending $2,000. If you spend millions of dollars on something, if you're a billionaire, that's like you and I spending pocket change because a billionaire already has everything they could possibly imagine ever wanting. Okay, you and I don't have that. While we may not feel a couple of thousand dollars as much as others, these guys don't feel a couple of million at all. Okay, it's chump change to them. And it could be the case that they're just following a dream. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's all these big companies who are producing supercars, million dollar cars, and these fringe companies and big companies like Bugatti and uh, Porsche, and Aston Martin. They make these cars that are one, $2 million. Now, they're very limited manufacturer. Like, they may make two, three, five, ten of them. That's it. But they're million-dollar cars, and they all get bought. And you think to yourself, who is buying these million-dollar cars? Well, it's about 31, 32 people in the world who buy them all. They're multi-billionaires because... To buy one more million-dollar car is no big deal. They've got 25 already. What's a 26th, okay? Buying a Skinwalker Ranch for $4.5 million is something akin to that. It may be this is just one more toy for a billionaire to play with. It might be that. Or, or yeah, it could be other things. I mean, the other thing that Brandon Fugel is doing with this is he's producing documentaries. He's turning this into a television project. In other words, when a billionaire does something, it can be one of two things. Actually, one of three. The first can be it's just a toy for him to play with, okay, as we discussed just a moment or two ago. It could also be 
This is an investment. Because remember, the guy's a billionaire. And most billionaires, virtually all billionaires, made the money themselves. There are very few billionaires, especially in America, who have inherited the billions from their family, okay? Most billionaires are self-made. In other words, they figured a way to turn a buck on something, so much so that they are now worth billions of dollars. Brandon Fugel is producing documentaries to sell to me and you on the Skinwalker Ranch. Now, could he have just bought this whole Skinwalker Ranch and turned it into a paranormal uh, playground to entice you and I to get us all hyped up so that we watch and buy his documentaries, his movies? Maybe. Maybe that's just it, okay? So it's either this or it's that, okay? But something to remember. There's a third option as to what this could really be. And it could be exactly as Bigelow uh, mentioned, exactly as Fugel mentioned, that there's something going on here, something paranormal, and I want to get to the bottom of it. It could be that as well. And the reason I say that is let's say it's not, it's, it's either, it's either door number one, uh, it's a toy or door number two. He wants to make a buck at this. Let's say it's one of those two. Okay. If it is, how do you explain what the Shermans did? Because the Shermans were not millionaires or billionaires. They were plain old folks who bought this ranch so they could live there and ranch cattle. They left after two years because, well, they couldn't make money at it. And it was just disrupting their home because of all the paranormal activity. Okay. Uh, The Ute Indian tribe, which is right on the fringe of the Skinwalker Ranch, they won't go near it. They say, no, it's bad karma, bad medicine, bad whatever they call it. They won't go near the Skinwalker Ranch. Okay. Now, are they just a bunch of uh, uninformed, ignorant people? The whole tribe, the whole mess of them? I, I don't know if that's true or not either. The Navajo, who were very close to the Ute people, Okay, they won't even discuss it with Whitey. Okay, if you're not a Navajo, we won't discuss it. This is private. This is sacred. That's just the way it works. And this just not the Navajo and the Ute Indian people of today. The Navajo and the Ute Indian people of another era. They drew skinwalkers on their petroglyphs. Now, remember, the Navajo have no written language, just a spoken language, okay? The way they documented history was through petroglyphs. And they documented skinwalkers on the sides of caves, on the sides of hills, on the side of mountains with petroglyphs. And skinwalkers, skinwalker equivalents are prevalent and active in virtually all other cultures in the world. Okay, so consider all that before you discount Bigelow, before you discount Fugel as just being billionaire play babies or guys trying to turn a buck. Could be that. But if it is that, how do you explain this other stuff? Okay, you've got to answer that question. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in the Sherlock Holmes mystery novels stories would always Holmes would always say the way you find out the guilty party is by eliminating the innocent and those that are left are guilty in other words if not this then what and the same is true for the skinwalkers now when this whole pandemic mess is over my goal is to go up to northeast utah try to get into the Skinwalker Ranch. And if I can't, at the very least, camp out in the areas. Because here's what I figure, okay? They're probably not going to let me in. And I'm not going to try to get in because in that part of the country, they have nuts with guns who shoot first and ask questions later. I'm not going to be a statistic, okay? Uh, So I'm not going to do anything so stupid. But if, if, if... If all this is taking part on a 500-acre ranch, they're not going to just stick to that area. So there's campsites. There's places to camp not far at all from the Skinwalker Ranch. I'm going to go. I'm going to camp out. 
I'm going to investigate this thing like I did with the UFOs, like I did with Bigfoot. And I will tell you this. I've camped out and, and looked for Bigfoot. I've camped out. I've looked for UFOs. Never seen Bigfoot. Never saw any sign of any Bigfoot ever. I have, however, seen a UFO. It was real. I saw it for myself. Number three son was with me and saw it with me. So it just wasn't me under the influence of too many Budweiser's. It was real. So I'm batting 50%. I'm batting 500 here, okay? That's a whole lot better than any of the Cardinals hit. That's one for two. Pretty good average. So when this whole mess is over, I don't know when it's going to be. Probably not even this year. Maybe next year, okay? This year, it may take too long. But one day... Mark my words, I'm going to go to Northeast Utah. I'm going to camp under the stars. And I'm going to camp either in or near the Skinwalker Ranch. And I will know, are Skinwalkers real? A figment of our imagination? And if I see it, will I be able to identify it as a some type of a UFO, some type of a Bigfoot, some type of a shapeshifter? I don't know. And maybe, maybe, maybe by this time next year, however, I'll have a better idea. That's my goal in life. That's my shining star out there. My goal, my, my brass ring that I'm going to reach for as soon as we come around and and pass the pandemic mess that we're in, as soon as we're allowed to get on airplanes, as soon as we're allowed to go out and do this kind of stuff, as soon as it's safe to do this, as, as soon as we get back to something that's at least has the resemblance of normalcy, I'm going to go. Maybe by myself, maybe with others. But one of two things are going to happen. Either I'm going to go and find something, or I'm going to go and find absolutely nothing. Either way, it's a camping trip in the western U.S. in a high desert under the stars. And tell me, my friends, dear listeners, How was that bad? Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. James Strong Show at Hotmail.com. That's the best way to get the podcast. Uh, You can find it on Spreaker.com. If you're searching through Facebook, you're going to stumble upon it. Uh, Twitter, the same thing. It's going to be there. I am on so many formats, I don't even know what formats I'm on. I know for a fact you can find me on iTunes. That's actually my number one biggest source. iHeartRadio, that's number two. CastBox is number three, believe it or not. YouTube is number four, believe it or not. Spotify is big too. Uh, TuneIn, I'm on TuneIn. The podcast app, I have listeners on that. Google Podcasts, people listen to that. SoundCloud, Deezer, and Spreaker.com. But again, the best way, send your email to me, jamesstrongshow at hotmail.com. That's the email address, jamesstrongshow at hotmail.com. You send me your email address. I put you on the James Strong Show fans list, and I email you a link as soon as the show drops so you can download it and listen to it at your leisure. And as always, emails are always appreciated. I love to talk with you dear listeners. That's it. Until next time, this is James Strong saying, adios.